Greetings, brothers and sisters. Shalom and welcome to our new discussion. And as always, welcoming Baruch from Israel. How are you, my good friend? Shalom, Christian. Doing well. And you and your family? We're doing well. Praise God. A very important thing, Baruch, uh, we touched on it in one of our last videos that we did, that we were going to uh, open this theme up a little bit more. And that is a terminology that's been used, well, for a number of years now. But once again, it's picking up momentum again. It's uh, when people claim they are drunk in the spirit. So if uh, you're ready, Baruch, let's look at this from a biblical perspective. Let's begin. Okay, as always, uh, we like to put this scripture first, Ephesians 5.11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. These are some of the reasons why we actually uh, do videos such as these with Baruch, just to highlight there's some dangerous teachings and doctrines in every uh, out there that people we really recommend stay away from. And drunk in the spirit is certainly one of those teachings. Um, before I hand over to you, Baruch, I'm just going to touch on what the generic meaning or explanation is. But we're going to start with a statement that nowhere in the Bible does it say to be drunk in the spirit. When the Bible speaks of being drunk, it always has a negative connotation. Some leaders in the word of faith, prosperity, the new apostolic reformation movements and churches associated, especially with that Toronto blessing, promote the false idea of being drunk in the spirit or being filled with drunken joy, glory. Congregations are instructed to get drunk, take another drink. You know, they'll say, take more of the Holy Spirit, drink more of the Holy Spirit and cast off all restraint. They start st stumbling, gates, slurred speech, falling to the ground and other odd behaviors that they claim are proof of the work of the Holy Spirit. The false teachers who promote being drunk in the spirit will always point to Acts 2.13 as a justification for this false practice. Now, we will look at Acts 2.13 in detail soon, Baruch, but what are your opening comments? Again, I concur. This is uh, just simply ridiculous. Uh, in regard to Acts 2, we know non-believers who didn't have discernment they couldn't uh, point out what was going on. It wasn't for all this behavior. It was because they heard a language they could not discern. So nowhere, as you point out, should we use the term drunk in the spirit. I think that's very dishonoring to the work of the Holy Spirit. You're right. Drunkenness is always biblically in a negative connotation. So why would we want to put that towards the spirit? And it's a great example of, of using terminology in the wrong way against what the scripture is saying in order to, to, to describe uh, what they're doing. And someone who has a, a biblical foundation will, will discern that what they're saying is in conflict and dishonoring to the true manifestation of the spirit. Amen. Now, as a disclaimer, I was saved in a Pentecostal church. It was very charismatic. Um, there was a lot of speaking in tongues, and we've addressed that in a, a video that we've already done with Baruch. So I have some certain views about that, that certain things must be followed biblically. But this is a very dangerous thing that people are actually teaching. And, you know, I think it's a combination, Baruch, that some people will just follow the lead of the senior pastor or the, the person up in the pulpit, or some is just outright demonic. And some people will tell me, oh, but that, that's a bit harsh. I don't think so at all. Uh, we're going to see through scripture the dangers of this, and we'll also show a short clip to clearly highlight the dangers of this. So uh, let's look at this clip, Baruch, and um, we'll be pausing and for your comments, okay? It's my long and shadow on most of us. It's a real supernatural process. Third up. Third up. Two days. 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 Two
for me because the big sisters are being step over and I've actually pulled themselves back, but you're not because you know the real and you know the thing you are so you will step over and run. What? And the fire drop, come on, it's in the fire drop, come on, it's fire, 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 yes, for sure. You don't really get much more out of the mouth. It's changed that. Now, before I move on, bro, I mean, we always see Kenneth Copeland mixed in. He's always a, a frequent uh, person that we've highlighted here. But uh, before we look at Kenneth Hagen, who also was spreading this movement uh, with great impact, uh, I always ask myself, how does that glorify God? But what, what are your initial comments before we proceed? With the other None of this is biblically based. It's not, as you pointed out, it's not glorifying to God. It's not the key word, I think, when I study the word of God and see the moving of the Holy Spirit, it's for edification. And this is not edifying. This is ridiculous. It's dishonoring. It's mockery. It's not based upon self-control. None of the fruit of the Spirit is is being manifested here it's just that which has nothing to do and it should be clearly obvious to people this is not the spirit of god we don't read about such uh experiences biblically in in the book of acts among believers in the first century this is demonic and it's not too strong to say that there's two options it's either of the holy spirit or an unclean spirit this is of an unclean spirit. Amen. Thank you. Uh, and, and it's important how you pointed out, and we will look at scriptures as well about self-control, but uh, we're going to see further evidence that this is anything but the Holy Spirit with self-control. So let's continue. Total hysteria there, Brooke. I mean, no self-control whatsoever. Uh, we're going to see now Heidi Baker. Heidi Baker, now the reason why we're uh, putting a couple of clips, one is uh, she's alone and the next time she'll be teaching at Bethel Church again, Bill Johnson's church. Um, sadly, I also know people, once again, beautiful people that love the Lord, um, but that really support and follow Haiti Baker. And their reason is obviously she does a lot of great work in Africa. 
I remind people as well that there's many cults that do what appears to be good works. You look at the Freemasons. Freemasons are one of the biggest contributors to building hospitals and things of that nature, but yet they're totally demonic. I just ask for people to be cautious and to test the fruit. But we're going to look at a couple of clips here of what Heidi Baker is first apparently drunk in the spirit, and second, her while drunk in the spirit imparting. They like that word impartation uh, and just to prophesy over people. Let's have a look. There will be volume. Totally stumbling around, falling over the, the floor. Your comments, Baruch, before we start looking at Acts 2, which they really base uh, this movement on. Well, I feel so sorry for the young man that we saw at the end mm. of the last clip in a blue and white checkered shirt. It yeah. seems like he is uh, in pain. Uh, the audio, if you could hear it, he was screaming out. Here again, this is not the movement of the Holy Spirit. All of this is, is supernatural, but not of God, but supernatural to deceive people. They believe that this unusual happening, they're told that it's the spirit of God. Therefore, it, it's an attempt to give credence and credibility to their false teaching. And it's dangerous in the same way that, that apparent good works or seemingly good works that people do in charities and orphanages and such, which we want to support. But just because someone is doing something that has some, some uh, good purpose behind it, helping orphans, doesn't mean that, that that puts a stamp of approval on them as individuals, them as Bible teachers. In fact, unfortunately, there's an epidemic in this world that people get involved in, in doing things like orphanages and helping young people out that are in broken homes. And they use that to exploit them, to, to abuse them, to satisfy their own uh, ungodly desires. And so we need to, as the scripture says, be a little bit discerning, test the spirits. And anyone, I would just say this, if, if there's someone that sees that and is in doubt whether that's of God or not, they really need to question their salvation experience because for me, the spirit of God within me, clearly when I look at that says, that's not me. Therefore, if you're unsure, you really need to examine where you are in the faith. I'm not trying to put doubt in people, but I have a lot of doubt if they can't discern that this is not of God. Correct. Now we will look at Acts 2 because once again, that's where they will always go to and say, no, you can be drunk in the spirit. We won't read all of it, but I want to highlight a few points, Baruch. So in Acts 2, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, 
as of a rushing mighty wind and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. It's very important. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then, of course, he goes on to say where people were from. Um, and then others mocking said, they are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. Before I hand over to you, Brooke, again, I mean, it's very clear here that it was a speech. It was another language that they were hearing, uh, an earthly language. Nowhere there does it make reference that they were rolling around the floor, barking at the moon, laughing hysterically and uncontrollably. It specifically relates to other languages. What are your comments, Brooke? They spoke in a way as the spirit gave them utterance. What came out of their mouth? We don't know. The miracle is that people from all of these countries heard them. We look at a few, if they were from Pontus, they heard them speaking in their own language of Pontus. If they were from another place, Macedonia, Macedonia they heard them speaking in the language that's, that's based in that place. So what they heard, they were able to discern. This is what's very important. So they spoke as the spirit gave them utterance, but they were able to hear, discern, and understand it in their own given language. That's the miracle of Acts chapter 2. Is that the only type of manifestation of tongues? No, but in this case, in Acts 2, we see that they were not drunk, the only thing that brought that in was their utterance that the non-believers, those who were, were not there for the right reasons, those who came doubting the, the movement of God, they were the ones that didn't understand what was going on. Believers did. Amen. Thank you. That is, of course, in Spanish. Um, and just before we move on, Baruch, we will be looking at some scriptures here to that clearly, clearly the word of God tells us um, that being drunk is not a good thing and the complete opposite, that the fruit is one of them is <laughs> self-control. Galatians 5, verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Your comments, bro. Yeah. None of what we saw in that clip, a very disturbing clip, relates to this. This is how the Spirit of God moves, not in that which is uncontrollable, not which is that is mockery, uh, not that's laying on the floor moving around. None of this is what the Scripture reveals. And I just want to go back to the conference that we held here in Sydney, Australia in early September, Baruch, because I really felt that, and I know people, oh, actually, I've already received a couple of emails saying, yes, but you guys are trying to put the Holy Spirit in a box. You're trying to control him. Absolutely not. When we had our uh, Friday evening uh, session, uh, Baruch was gracious enough to um, basically invite people for prayer, for healing. Uh, things of that nature, but there was order. There was none of this was that we've just seen on the screen. Things were done in an orderly fashion and the Holy Spirit moved in a mighty way as well. So I just want to caution people that it's not about controlling the Holy Spirit, but it's about having self-control and order. Ephesians 5 verses 15 to 18. So then be careful how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise making the most of your time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. 
and do not get drunk with wine in which there is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Your comments, bro. It makes a big distinction between the concept of drunk, how that should be used, and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Very different. Going back to an earlier comment that you made just a few moments ago, um, anyone who, who believes in the Trinity that the Holy Spirit, that he is God, you can't put God in a box. Uh, no one would want to do that. So it's no attempt to put God in a box or limit him. We want God, and I believe that that evening that you were speaking of, we wanted God to move freely. We prayed, God, you know, send your spirit, uh, fall upon us, move according to your will. So in my opinion, things were done very orderly, but that's not limiting God. God is a God of order, and we want God to move, and how can we stop him? Move according to his purposes. That's what we were hoping for. Never would I, I see anything that related to trying to limit or put God in a box. Uh, any believer knows that we can't limit God. That's against who he is. And we certainly have no power to, to put him in a box. So I think very uh, disturbing uh, comments. I mean, thank you. Romans 13, 13. Let's behave properly as in the day, not in carousing and in drunkenness, not in sexual promis promiscuity and debauchery, not in strife and jealousy. Over to you, bro. Um, again, drunkenness is never associated and should never be associated with the Holy Spirit. We don't see those two things moving together in the scripture, the moving of the Holy Spirit and drunkenness. Quite the contrary. Drunkenness is related to what Romans 13, 13 just said, things that are against the manifestation of the Spirit. Amen. And I think God, and I'm sure you concur with this, Baruch, but God wants every aspect of our lives as believers in Yeshua to be under the complete control of the Holy Spirit. But this does not come by drunkenness, and it does not mimic its effects. So it's something that we need to be very mindful of. Well said. Any final thoughts that you have, Baruch? Again, people need to look at what the scripture says concerning the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. How was the Holy Spirit manifested in the Gospels and the rest of the New Testament? Seeing what, what the scripture depicts as the moving of the Holy Spirit. And when someone does a thorough study, really a simple study, will even confirm this. What is taking place in these movements of uh, ridiculous behavior as portrayed in that clip, um, such a, a, a conflict with what they profess to be the spirit and what the scripture reveals, the Holy Spirit, how he moves in this world. I guess my final question to you, Baruch, are you surprised that we see this? Because we, we, we've seen in scripture that in the last days, there will be an increase in deception. No, I'm, I'm not surprised. I, I'm disappointed to see what I consider many believers buying into this, being led astray by this. And it goes back to what I've said, and that is it's very alarming, discontenting concerning the, the weakness of the body of Messiah. I'm speaking of the church, the local congregation. We saw that during this, this time in the last couple of years of of this uh, pandemic, we see how weak and how willing the, the believers are willing to conform to things rather than to be that peculiar people of, of self-control, of those things that, that speak about the characteristics, the attributes of God, rather than uh, falling into some of the same things that what I would uh, caution people, when you look at this behavior that's being portrayed by Heidi Baker and the like as moving the Holy Spirit, this is the same type of behavior that you see in the pagan world with false gods in, in faraway places where it's not the spirit moving, it's Satan moving and unclean demonic influence. They're having that thing where, where they never mention Messiah, they never mention Yeshua, they never speak about the Bible, but 
they're dealing with other religions, but this is the manifestation that they're having. That should be very uh, informing to people what is taking place at these uh, manifestations of the demonic influence. Amen. Well said. Well, brothers and sisters, thank you for your time. I hope you've been blessed by this video. Uh, we welcome your comments, always in a respectful manner. And um, thank you, Baruch, for, for your time. Uh, I think it was a very important subject that we have to tackle today. I've been blessed by it. And um, from Baruch in Israel, from myself here in Sydney, Australia, we pray you've been blessed, brothers and sisters, and God willing, we will see you next time. Shalom.